What are you doing, Hazel? I'm hand rearing a, a baby common pipistrel bat. Unfortunately, he was orphaned recently. Uh, the female bats in the colony moved because of the bad weather, and he was either dropped as they were moving or he was just left behind. Um, and all, all the adult bats have gone from the roost. So he crawled out, um, was dropped, and was found on the front doorstep of the house where the roost had been. Um, he was only a few days old when he came to us. We've had him about three days. He only weighed 1.1 gram when he arrived, and last night he'd gone up to 1.4 grams. And we're using a, a special puppy formula milk which is close to bat milk composition, so it's got about 30% fat because baby bats need a high fat content in the milk. Mm. He's absolutely tiny. He's really hungry. <laughs> wow, look at that. Such tiny eyes. I don't suppose they need eyes. They do use their eyes. They do. Yeah, they is that do. just because he's so small? Well, yeah, his eyes haven't really opened yet. Most mm. mammals are born with their eyes closed um, and they open later. Mm. But they have such good echolocation skills that they, at night they don't use their eyes as much as, as we would. You have to be very careful because their nostrils are very close to the mouth, so yeah. you mustn't inhale the milk. So it's it's a skill job. You can't it just is. do this. Nobody should try themselves. No, no, you can cause um, aspiration pneumonia if you get the milk in the wrong place. He's absolutely minuscule. See, he may have had enough. And the way to check is if we turn him over, mm -hmm. we can have a look at his underside. And because he's so young, he has no fur on his belly, so no. that we can see the milk in his gut. Oh, let me just have a little bit of focus. So we can see he's got quite a nice full belly now. Mm. Oh wow, you can. <laughs> he's tiny. So he'll Absolutely need feeding tiny. in about another two hours when he's digested all that milk. So you're having to, oh there he goes, look yes. you can see his wings and everything. Yeah, he's um, just about to open his eyes, he was just beginning to open them this morning because when they're first born the, the eyes are sealed up. Mm. And the wings are the last part to develop because that's the part that isn't needed to start with. Mm. They, they're born with a large head so that they can suckle from their mother and large feet so that they can actually cling on. So his feet are down here so that they don't get lost. And big thumbs, these are the thumbs, these claws at the front so that they can hang on to their mum or crawl about in the roost. Mm and the wings are very, very tiny. Um, they're only about a third of the length that they will be when he's fully grown. That's quite amazing. Look at the skin. He's just beginning to grow fur. I can just see the fluff growing mm. on his back. So within a few days, he will have short fur. So how are you gonna train him to fly? Well, we now have a, a nice big flight cage at Wildwood, and so hopefully we can teach him to fly in the flight cage. Um, we have a, a, an insect lamp which attracts insects in, because as well as learning to fly, he also needs to be able to catch insects on the wing if he's going to survive in the wild. And he also needs to practice echolocating. So what's Wildwood doing to protect bats? Well, at Wildwood, um, in partnership with the Kent Bat Group, we now have a large flight cage where we try to rehabilitate bats which have been injured or orphaned. And it's also important that we use it to educate people. Um, visitors to Wildwood can sometimes see bats being test flown and learn about bats. We're also um, working to, to put other species back into the wild which live in similar habitats to bats and so helping with the conservation of um, natural areas where, where bats might live. So bringing back natural areas, 
with animals like beavers and wild horses, they will help bats, will they? They will, because many of our bats like to feed over wetland areas, and so beavers and water voles help to create um, good habitat for, for bats and um, encourage insects, which the bats will feed on. What can we all do to protect bats? Well, we can make sure that they have good habitats to forage in for insects. So that means uh, reducing the amount of pesticides that we use um, and also managing the countryside sympathetically for them. So having hedgerows that the bats can use to commute to their feeding areas. Um, we also need to protect the roosts. So making sure that bats that are living in buildings such as oast houses and barns are taken into, into account when these buildings are actually converted. Um, and maybe being a bit more tolerant of, of sharing our space with the bats because actually they're very useful for us. One little pipistrel bat like this can eat 3,000 mosquitoes in a night. So they're very useful animals to have around. And do they have hands as such on their wings? or is they, um, got they do. Their wing is actually the hand. Mm. And what's happened is the fingers have grown very, very long and then become webbed and that's what the, the wing is. It's just an overgrown hand. So the little claw you can see is actually his thumb but all his fingers are actually tied up inside the wing. So a little bump at the top is his wrist. Now, is there any chance of seeing the body a bit more in that position? That's that echolocation for It you? is, yeah. It's very basic echolocation. Usually we can't hear the echolocation, but he's he's doing very low um, sounds, so we can actually hear them. Wow, smaller than a parakeet. That is quite amazing, isn't it? Wow, I think it's getting a bit. Okay, okay, let's okay. put it away. Well, thank you very much for that, Hazel. That's wonderful to see the world of the little baby 